your Bibles to Psalm 40. This is not the message, and so please don't charge me for the time. But when life gets hectic, as it will do this year, as life gets strenuous and stressful, as it will this year, take a second and consider Psalm 40 and verse 5, which goes along uh, with what the song they just sang says. <clears throat> Psalm 40, verse 5, Many, O Lord my God, are thy wonderful works which thou hast done, and thy thoughts which are to us work. They cannot be reckoned up in order unto thee. If I would declare and speak of them, there are more than can be numbered. It does us good to think about the blessings. We live in a sin-cursed world. There are trials. Uh, we make messes of things ourselves. Uh, other things happen in relationships, but God is always there, is He not? And we can always count our blessings. So just consider that. With that in mind, go to the book of Luke, the Gospel of Luke, chapter number 8. The Gospel of Luke in chapter 8, and now you can start the clock, all right? In Luke chapter number 8, way back a year ago, in the beginning days of 2023, we looked at our theme for the year. And we use this passage in Luke chapter 8 to introduce the theme. And then we went from that theme uh, throughout the scriptures to look at how we can do and act out and perform the theme that we chose for 2023 here at Berean. So I want to re recap, give a quick recap of this theme. Luke chapter 8, verse 38 and 39. Let's, let's look at that. And you follow along as I read Luke 8, verse 38. Now the man out of whom the devils were departed besought him, that's Jesus, that he might be with him. But Jesus sent him away, saying, Return to thine own house, and show how great things God hath done unto thee. And he went his way and published throughout the whole city how great things Jesus had done unto him. Our theme for 2023 was spread the word. So let's take just a few minutes today and think about it. How did we do? How did I do in witnessing in 2023? How did you do when it comes to spreading the word? Let's bow our heads and hearts in a word, for a word of prayer. With your heads bowed and your eyes closed, just take a moment and thank God for his blessings. Then ask him to speak to your heart and refresh in your heart the urgency and the need to spread the gospel to those around us. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for the blessings. And the psalmist was so right when he wrote that what you have done for us and your blessings are more than can be numbered. And Lord, if you were to count every one, we would never uh, get to the end of that list. So Father, help us to live our lives uh, in appreciation and gratitude for your goodness and who you are. Thank you for the salvation through Christ, most of all that we have and the assurance we have of eternal life. Now, Father, as we come to this time to recap, to reflect, and to remember what we've talked about this past year, Lord, instill in our hearts the flame to continue to get in the gospel out here in our community and around the world. And we'll praise you for what you do because of our time and your word today. In Jesus' name, amen. This morning we have a, a big task. We're going to take six messages we saw at the beginning of 2023 and bring them into one message on this day in 2024. So buckle up, all right? We're going to move through this quickly. We're not going to talk about everything. This is an incredible story. The Lord Jesus Christ comes to the country of the Gadarenes, if you remember the story. And there he encounters a demon-possessed man. The man was wild. He was crazy. He hurt others. He hurt himself. The demons had a total domination and control over this man. But when he encountered the solution, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ cast out the demons. And the Bible says the man was in his right mind. He was sitting. He was clothed. And this man, in gratitude for the blessing of his healing, the blessing of having the demons cast out, he wanted to follow Jesus. He wanted to travel with the Lord Jesus. But... The Lord Jesus gave him a divine mission. And we see that mission in verse 39. He told this man, return to your house and show how great things God hath done unto you. Go home and share and spread the word of what God has done. Well, this man took that to heart and he went home 
and he told them what God had done. But he went beyond that because it goes on to say he went his way and published throughout the whole city. And remember, the city was called Decapolis. And what does the prefix deca mean? Like a uh, decathlon, decapolis. It was actually ten small cities. So he went beyond just talking to his household. He spread the word throughout the cities around him what Jesus had done for him. And the Bible uses an interesting word. It says he published it. How many of you remember reading about this, and I don't know if any of us experienced this personally, but you remember reading about the town criers, the town criers. What was the job of the town criers? Uh, they lived and worked before the days of printed newspapers and obviously before the days of media, uh, radio and television to get news out. And so the town crier would herald the daily news or he would herald the sign of a coming enemy. He would herald, hey, it's 10 o'clock and all's well, whatever he might say. He was the town crier, and he couldn't be shy. He had to be willing to lift his voice and let the people throughout the town know what was happening, what was coming, and what was important. And that's the same idea that this man became the town crier for Christ. He let other people know. He published what Christ had done. Now, as we went through our theme for 2023, and by the way, we're going to look at our theme for 2024 next Sunday, so be here for that. But as he, we went through that theme, we found five aspects of spreading the word. And so as we go through these, let's see how we did. How did you do when it comes to spreading the word? First of all, uh, go back to Numbers 16. We're going to go quickly, so like I said, we keep your Bibles flexible. If you can't get to the Scriptures, write them down, take notes, and you can review that this week at home. In Numbers chapter 16, there is a rebellion by a man led by a man named Korah. And Korah was tired of Moses and Aaron taking the leadership in the nation of Israel. And so they confronted them, and he raised a rebellion against the leadership God had established for the nation of Israel. And so God judged Korah. And, and the earth opened and swallowed up Korah and all the rebels, and the people were frightened. But the next day, the nation of Israel, they got angry with Moses, and they blamed Moses for the death of Korah, and they wanted to take Moses and Aaron and remove them from leadership. And God was angry, and God stepped in and poured out a plague on the nation of Israel and people were dying from the get-go. In fact, it ended up there were 14,700 people died in this plague. But we come in number 16, verse 40, verses 46. It says this, And Moses said unto Aaron, Take a censer, and put fire therein from off the altar, and put on incense, and go quickly unto the congregation, and make an atonement for them, for there is wrath gone out from the Lord, the plague is begun. And Aaron took as Moses commanded and ran into the midst of the congregation. And behold, the plague was begun among the people. And he put on incense and made an atonement for the people. And he stood where? Between the dead and the living and the plague was stayed. The plague came and people were dying. And we see our need is to spread the word with urgency. Just as Aaron... It says in verse, uh, verse 46, Moses told Aaron, go quickly. Verse 47 says that Aaron ran and he stood between the dead and the living. And we have the same task today. We're to go quickly. We're to go with urgency, just as Aaron did. People were dead. People were dying. And something needed to be done. And the longer Aaron hesitated, the longer Aaron waited the more people would die. And that is the same task we have when it comes to spreading the word. How have we done? Have we spread the word with a sense of urgency? Why should we spread the word with a sense of urgency? Very simple, because death is coming. Death is coming both to the lost man, and we stand between those who are alive and those who have perished, but death is coming to the lost man. He needs to hear the gospel. But death is also coming to the believer. 
And after we die and go to be with the Lord, there is no more chance to witness to the loved ones, to witness to the co-workers, to witness to the classmates, to witness to our neighbors, to give money to missions. We, in the same manner as Aaron, need to spread the word with urgency. And not just because death is coming, but also because Christ is coming. Heaven's going to be great, will it not? Heaven's going to be a wonderful place. I look forward to going to heaven. How many of you look forward to going to heaven? And it could be this year. All right, now, if you're not sure you're going to heaven, I've got great news. Jesus died for you and can save you today. But the fact of the matter is, Christ is coming. Where will we be able to witness? To whom will we be able to witness in heaven? In heaven, we'll be sharing the glory of our salvation and we'll be worshiping because of our salvation, but there'll not be one soul to win to Christ in heaven. And so now is the time. When we spread the word, we must spread the word with urgency. It is so important. You say, well, you know, I've, I've been meaning to talk to my co-worker. How do you know he will be alive this time next week? Now is the time to talk to him. Well, I've been meaning to witness to my classmates at school. Now is the time. We must understand the urgency of spreading the word. The second thing, go to 2 Kings. 2 Kings. We saw another story as we went through the series on spreading the word. Not just spread the word with urgency, but in 2 Kings, we saw a very interesting story. The city, uh, the city of Samaria was under siege. And uh, it was being sieged by the Syrians. And food had, had been cut off. And conditions were drastic in the city. There was no food. They were eating all kinds of things in the city. Uh, they had, and to be, I don't want to be crude, but they had resorted to cannibalism in the city. That's just how bad things had happened. There was a group of lepers. Lepers at that time were ostracized. They were cast out of the community. They had to live on their own together outside. They were deplored. They were hated. And this group of four lepers, they were outside the city, and they too were starving. And they said, our situation's hopeless. There's nothing that we can do for ourselves. If we go into the city, we're just going to starve to death like we are now. They said, but if we go to the camp of the Syrians, maybe they'll have mercy on us and at least feed us before they kill us. We never know what might happen. So these lepers, they went to the camp, and I'm just really giving a brief summary of the story. They go to the camp of the enemy, and they find the fires lit and the tents pitched and everything is there, but there are no people. God had sent a noise and, and the, the Syrians thought it was the enemy coming, that Israel had gotten help and, had, and the army was coming and they fled. And they left the chicken frying in the frying pan, all right? They left the green beans on the stove. They left everything just as it was. And the lepers show up and the camp is empty. And they begin to eat and enjoy the blessings of what had happened. And they began to see the money and the gold and the silver and the new clothes. And say, hey, this is great. Everything we needed is here. But then go to verse number 8 of 2 Kings chapter 7 and verse number 8. 2 Kings 7, 8. And when these lepers came to the uttermost part of the camp, they went into one tent and did eat and drink and carried thence silver and gold and raiment and went and hid it and came again and entered into another tent and carried it thence also and went and did what? Hid it. But then they got to thinking. They said one to another, we do not well. This day is a day of good tidings and we hold our peace. If we tarry till the morning light, some mischief will come upon us. Now therefore come that we may go and tell the king's household. And so they're enjoying that and they were taking all the blessings they had encountered and what did they do with the gold and the silver and the clothing? What did they do with it? They hid it. And all of a sudden it hit them. Our families, our friends, our neighbors, those even who despise us because of our disease... They're, they're starving and they're dying. And if we don't share what we have encountered, if we don't share what we have found with them, they said, we do not 
well. Notice what it says in verse 9, the first part. They went from we do not well to the last part of the verse, let's go and tell. And Christian friend, that's what we need to do. We need to get to the point where we spread the word with conviction. Not just with urgency, but number two, spread the word with conviction. We must sense the urgency and be convinced that if I don't share the word, if I don't share the gospel, if I don't tell others about Christ, I am not doing what I should. And we need to transition from we do not well to let's go and tell. Go to Luke chapter 8. Luke chapter 8. Once again, Luke chapter 8. There's an interesting verse here before the story of the demonic uh, of the Gadarenes. Jesus gives a principle. Remember, what did the lepers do at first with the gold, the silver, and the raiment? They hid it. But look at what Jesus says in Luke 8, verse 16. No man, when he hath lighted a candle, covereth it with a vessel, or putteth it under a bed, but setteth it on a candlestick, that they which enter in may see the light. Don't hide the gospel. Paul wrote this to the church at Corinth. If our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. And I think too many times we hide our Christianity. We hide our testimony. We hide the gospel. We know they need it. We're enjoying the, the buffet of salvation. We're enjoying the new clothes of the robe of righteousness we receive from Christ. We, res we enjoy all the benefits of salvation. While in the city people are starving, people are dying, we need to come to the point where we say we do not well. Let's go and tell. So we must spread the word with conviction. That if we do not do that, we are disobedient Christians. If I'm not a consistent witness with my life and with my lips, and I do not strive to share Christ and look for and take opportunities to share Christ, I am not doing well as a Christian. Spread the word, number one, with what? Right, the review time, quiz time, pop quiz. Spread the word, number one, with urgency. Spread the word, number two, with conviction. All right, now let's go to Acts chapter 4. And I promise you, Lord willing, we'll be back in the book of Acts, back in our series in a couple of weeks. But we'll be seeing Acts a little bit from time to time between now and then. Acts chapter 4. We see the early church. The early church found themselves confronted with a choice to go underground, to go silent, or to spread the word. They had to choose. Pentecost was over. People had been saved. And now the persecution, not from the Romans, but from the, Jew the Jewish leaders, the religious leaders, the Sanhedrin, the scribes and Pharisees, the same ones that went after Christ, are now going after the early church. And they had a choice to make. They had a choice to go silent and step back and just have their church services and meet on the first day of the week as they were doing and enjoy uh, the idea of salvation in Christ, or they could spread the word. But look at what it says in verse 31. They had been told to be quiet. They had been told to stop. They had been told to quit spreading the word. But when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and they did what? They spake the word of God with what? Boldness. Spread the word with urgency. Spread the word with conviction. Number three, spread the word with boldness. Spread the word with boldness. The word translated boldness here in Acts 4.31 is translated in other ways throughout the New Testament. And it really gives us a good definition of what it means to spread the word and be a witness with boldness. Number one, uh, the word boldness is translated openly. Same word boldness, to spread the word openly. In other words, don't be ashamed of who you are. Don't be ashamed of being a Christian. Spread the word openly. Uh, don't be bothered if people know you're a Christian. And I'm going to tell you something. Uh, Tina and I, she shares a podcast, a brief podcast with me the other day. And the fact of the matter is, people, the worse the world gets. Is the world getting worse? And if you don't see the world getting worse, with all respect, your head's in the sand. 
we should stand out even more. If we don't stand out more, something's wrong here. We're compromising somewhere. Because as the world gets darker, many Christians put themselves on a dimmer switch where we're not shining any brighter. The darker it gets, the more we should stand out. Openly. The word boldness means openly. The word boldness means plainly. There is no doubt what they believed about Christ. There is no doubt about the answer of the world. Boldness means plainly, very plainly and simply sharing Christ. The gospel is so simple. Jesus said you have to have the faith of a child. Childlike faith is simple. Childlike faith is, is fully trusting. Let's not complicate the gospel as some want to do today. Boldness is openly. Boldness is plainly. Boldness is freely, also translated freely. Without reservation, without boundaries, wherever we go, we spread the gospel. And then with confidence, openly, plainly, freely, confidently. Confidence. Let me ask you this. Is the Bible true? Boy, that was weak. Uh, yeah, you know, maybe you're still getting you're not quite over the holidays yet. You should be. It's January 7th, folks, all right? It's Jan but still, have you not quite back into the routine yet? All right, I think I, I'm getting there myself. But okay, is the Bible true? Yes. Is Jesus the only way to heaven? Yes. All right, is he willing to save anyone, anytime, anywhere who comes to him by faith? Yes, yes absolutely. Thank you. So are you confident that the gospel is true? Yes. Are you confident that that's what the world needs? Then why don't we share it? Spread the word with boldness. If it's true, you can teach it. Well, people might say, well, I just don't believe all that. Whether or not they believe it doesn't make it any less true. They may ridicule it, but it doesn't diminish the truth. They may say, well, you know, all religions take you to the same place. Well, they do. All religions take you to hell. Christ takes you to heaven. It's, it's a person. It's a Savior that takes you to heaven. So if, if we have confidence it's true, spread it boldly. We speak the truth in love. Remember that? I almost preached a message on that, but that'll be another time. What is our, what is our foundation as believers? Truth. What is our obligation? To speak. What is our motivation? Love. Speaking the truth in love. Spread the word with boldness. How did they find that boldness? Look at verse 13 of Acts 4. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived they were unlearned and ignorant men. Now that word ignorant, remember when we talked about this way back a year ago, maybe you don't. The Greek word for ignorant is idiotes. What does the word idiotes sound like? Just say it, in, well, you can say it out loud, I guess, it's okay. But that's the word. They said these guys are rude, uneducated fishermen. They don't have the religious training we have. But they said, I can't believe they're speaking with such boldness. They said they marveled, they were astonished at the boldness of Peter and John. And they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. You know why we don't spread the word enough? We're not with Jesus. We're saved. But we're not with him. We're not abiding in him. Jesus gave us a promise. He told his followers, in, and I think it's Matthew 4, 19, Follow me, and I will make you what? Fishers of men. So it's not a matter of dedicating ourselves to spreading the word. It's a matter of dedicating ourselves to truly follow Christ. And if I'm with Christ, he will give me that sense of urgency. He will give me that conviction. He will give me that boldness. A consistent walk with Christ gives me boldness. Then they asked God. They said, God, grant us boldness in verse 29. And now, Lord, behold their threatenings. They're threatening to imprison us. They're threatening to kill us. And grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may speak thy word. They ask God for boldness. You know what? God granted that through the power of the Spirit. And it says they spake the word of God with boldness. Spread the word. How'd you do? Spread the word, number one, with what? Urgency. Number two, with conviction. Number three, with boldness. 
And then now go back to Luke. The Gospel of Luke once again here in Luke, Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 2. You say, well, we've just been in Luke chapter It was Christmas. We've been in Luke chapter 2. But here's the point. We saw this last January as well. Look at Luke chapter 2, verses 10 and 11. Shepherds in the fields watching the sheep, and the angel appears to them. And in verse 10, And the angel said unto them, the shepherds, Fear not. For behold, I bring you good tidings. That's an evangelist, the same idea of evangelism. I bring you good tidings of great what? Joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Spread the word with joy. The message of the gospel, which is good tidings. The word good tidings is the same word translated gospel in 1 Corinthians 15. The message of the gospel... Number one is a message of great joy. Great joy. Do others that do, that do not know Christ, do they see the joy of Christ in us? Do they see the joy of Christ in our lives? That doesn't mean we don't cry. It doesn't mean we don't have hard times. It doesn't mean sometimes we don't get frustrated at life and the way things happen. But overall, we live in joy because of the blessings He's given to us. There's a magnet on our refrigerator. I don't know where Tina got it, but I put it back up there yesterday. We took down all of our Christmas stuff yesterday. You say, you wait after New Year? I wait as long as I can, as long as I can bear it. Then the tree is dying, so it's time, okay? Uh, if you have an artificial tree, that's okay. Second best is all right, okay? But anyway, we took our Christmas stuff down. So I took all the Christmas magnets off the front of the refrigerator, and I put that up there, and I thought about it as I did it. Choose Joy is what it says. Choose joy. When life happens, and you know what I mean, we have a choice. Will I choose bitterness, complaining, unforgiveness, or whatever, or will I choose joy? doesn't mean I'm happy about what's happened. The joy of the Lord is my what? Strength, the Bible says. Where can I find strength when life is happening to me? By choosing joy. Joy of the Lord. And so we spread the word with joy. The gospel is a message of great joy, the angel said. But it's also a message of great joy to whom? For whom is this joy? All people. Not just a select elect. Not just a chosen few. The message of the gospel is for all people. The Savior was born for the world, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Spread the word with joy. Listen, there's joy in the message. God's love, God's grace, God's forgiveness. There's joy in the obedience. Jesus, there in John 4, was at the well witnessing to the woman at the well the woman of Samaria, and she accepted him as her Messiah, and goes back into the city to tell everyone, and the disciples in the meantime come back with the food for the day. They said, here, Jesus, have something to eat. He says, no, I, I've had something you don't know about. And they said, did someone bring him food? Jesus said, no, my satisfaction, my meat, my sustenance, my satisfaction is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. There's something about the joy of obeying Christ. There's something about the joy of spreading the gospel. When you share soul winning testimonies and witnessing testimonies, it produces joy. Sometimes there is sadness when someone rejects the gospel, but that joy of obedience there's, obedience, there's joy in the message. There's joy in the obedience. There's joy in the harvest. Jo uh, Paul told the church at Thessalonica, you are our glory and joy. The fact that you've accepted Christ and he's built a church and you're going on for God, you are my joy. You make it worth it. You motivate me to spread the gospel to others because you're my crowning achievement. 
Paul says, the crowning achievement of my life is the fact that you trusted Christ, that you are following Christ, that you too are spreading your faith, he told this church, is known throughout the world. That church was spreading the word themselves. And Paul says, you're my joy. Listen, there is joy in spreading the word. So number one, spread the word how? With urgency. Number two, spread the word with conviction. Number three, spread the word with boldness. Number four, spread the word with joy. Last of all, look at 1 Corinthians chapter 4. 1 Corinthians chapter 4. In 1 Corinthians 4, we see a word that is so important when it comes to spreading the word, sharing the gospel. 1 Corinthians 4 and verse... One, let a man so account of us as of the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Look at verse two. Moreover, it is required in stewards. What is a steward? What was a steward of that day? A steward was an overseer of an entrusted responsibility. The steward was in the household of the master and the master says, you're in charge of this. This is your job. And you're to take that job seriously and you're to oversee something I am entrusting you to do. It says, moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found what? Faithful. What it was the number one requirement of a steward? To be faithful. To oversee his area of responsibility given to him by the master and do it well. Just a few weeks before ascending to heaven... After his resurrection, Jesus went to heaven, but before he did, he said this to his followers. As the Father has sent me now, even so, I'm sending you. The Son had come to seek and to save that which was lost, he said. And then he told his followers, now I'm sending you. We are stewards of the gospel. Who's going to share the gospel of the world if the church of Jesus Christ does not? Who's going to share the gospel with your neighbors if you do not? Young people, who's going to share the gospel with your classmates if you do not? Who's going to be the gospel in your family, in public, in our community? Spread the word with faithfulness. Faithful as a steward. Faithfulness as an ambassador. Look at Second, we'll look at this. I was just going to read it, but look at it. I want you to get it by, as my dad used to always say, by the eye gate, not just the ear gate. Second Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 20. Second Corinthians 5, 20. Paul writes this, Now then we are ambassadors for Christ. He did not say, hey, I encourage you to be an ambassador for Christ. What did he say we are? We are ambassadors. It's just what kind of ambassador are we? What is, what, what is the job of an ambassador? A steward oversees an entrusted responsibility. What is an ambassador? He is in a foreign country representing his home country. We live in a foreign country. We are strangers and pilgrims here, the Bible says. And we're to represent our home country, heaven, and be good ambassadors. Now then we are ambassadors for Christ. We're to be faithful as ambassadors. Just jot this reference down. We won't look it up. Proverbs 13, 17. Proverbs 13, 17 says this. A faithful ambassador is health. A faithful ambassador is health. Why do we need to be faithful? Well, obviously to please the master, to please Christ. And because of the reality of eternity. Are you convinced as well that eternity is real? That heaven is an actual place? That hell is an actual place? For those whom we know, heaven and hell are real. And everyone you know, everyone you pass in the grocery store, everyone you work with, everyone in your neighborhood, everyone you go to school with, everyone in your family, is going to spend eternity in heaven or in hell. We must be faithful to spread the word. How have we done? How have I done? I've had to look at myself this week. How have you done? 
in spreading the word. Now, 2023 is over. 2024 has begun. We're going to see a new church theme. But does that mean last year's theme? Okay, we're done. Check the box, move on, don't have to witness anymore. No, it still goes on. Keep spreading the word. How should we spread the word? Number one, how? With urgency. Number two, how? With conviction. Number three, boldness. Number four, joy. Number five, with faithfulness. How have we done? Have we spread the word urgently, with conviction, boldly, joyfully, faithfully? Keep spreading the word. There was a missionary to South Africa in the mid-1800s, Robert Moffat. And one time Robert Moffat said, Moffat said this, We'll have all eternity to celebrate our victories, but only one short hour before sunset to win them. We'll have all eternity to celebrate the blessings that we heard them sing about earlier today. But right now we've got to share the way to that blessing. The way to know Christ. The way to salvation. Yes, 2023 has ended. 2024 has begun. But we still need to spread the word. How'd you do last year? How will you do this year? Let's commit ourselves afresh and anew to spread the word. Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. With our heads bowed and eyes closed, all that we've talked about is encapsulated in that verse Jesus said, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. And we're to follow him, abide in him, walk with him, ask him, and he'll give us the boldness to live the gospel and the boldness to share the gospel. How have you done? Maybe you need to ask forgiveness this, this, for not sharing the gospel this past year. Maybe you say, God, there's people I'm still praying for. However God spoke into your heart, would you talk to him about that? Heavenly Father, take these moments and use them for your glory in our hearts. In Jesus' name. With our heads bowed and eyes closed, would you stand with me, please? With our heads bowed, eyes closed, no one's looking around. As an invitation hymn plays, do you need to talk to the Lord about something today? Maybe you need to come and bow your knee here at the altar. Sometimes that does us good. So, Lord, I, I've had opportunities and I haven't taken them. Lord, I failed in spreading the word this past year. Or what I've done the best I could, keep me faithful. I don't know how God's spoken to you. Maybe he's spoken to you about your own salvation. That if you die today, you're not sure you'd go to heaven. I have great news. Jesus Christ can save you. Would you see me after the service? Let's talk about that. Turn your eyes to Christ. Follow him. And you'll be faithful in spreading the word. Walk with him. Pray for that loved one right now. Pray for that co-worker, that classmate, that neighbor. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for the time in your word today. Lord, I pray you would seal the truth and the importance of sharing the gospel with others. Lord, seal it to our hearts. Help us to trust you to do it even more effectively in the coming year. In Jesus' name, amen.